You're listening, of course, to the first session in the Treaty Debates series in Soundings Theatre Te Papa on the subject of the Treaty, um, and the series has been organised as a way of providing you, the public, with information on Treaty-related issues and to give you an opportunity to consider and discuss those issues. Um, and we are now going to invite questions and comments from the floor. I'll make this short and sweet. I'm Josh Clark, uh, kia ora. My question's more to, um, to Dr. Paul Spoonley. Um, you talked a little bit about how um, multicultural can probably support biculturalism. I'm just interested to hear what kind of strategies, as New Zealand does become more, as you know, more um, yeah, multicultural. Kia ora, Josh. Um, uh, I think Ranganui has a, a view on this. Can I just give mine and allow Ranganui the right to, to add his? Um, immigration has provided New Zealand with a very different set of demographic and political dynamics. It, I mean, as I mentioned in the speech, this country has transformed itself through immigration in a way that very few other countries have post-2000. What I think is very disappointing is that the treaty has not been part of the policy discussions, but also that Māori have not been given the role of welcoming those new immigrants here. I think the immigration relationship, if you like, has left Māori out, and that is a position which is unsustainable and something needs to be done about it. Uh, the preamble to the treaty is New Zealand's first immigration policy, that uh, the chiefs signing that treaty had agreed to the fact that there were British people coming here to New Zealand, the Queen's people, and they needed to be cared for. But in our own time, immigration has become a tool of economic development, and this is what I personally am opposed to. Uh, my strategy is pull up the drawbridge. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you think about it. The, the Polynesians are the people of the sea, tangata o te moana. And their strategy was to go from island to island and eat themselves down the food chain. When they got to New Zealand, they couldn't believe it. There were all these fat seals and big walking chickens called <laughs> moors, and they ate their way down the food chain. And then suddenly they realised that they'd come up to the limits of growth of the hunting, fishing, gathering economy. So they sent someone off into the Southern Ocean, a guy called Hui Tarangiora, and he came back and reported, there's no more land. Migration from the Pacific stopped. The ocean going voyages came to an end. And Māori learned to balance their population with what resources that they, have, they had. Uh, in our hearings on, of the Waitangi Tribunal on the Whanganui claim, for instance, the local people there had a special relationship with the long fin eel, the tuna, that migrate up their rivers. And they rotationally harvest the creeks that feed into that river, and they have never depleted the resource. But under the modern economy, where the state manages the distribution of resources and allocation of fishing quota, that resource is now under stress. And this is the madness of the political economy that doesn't recognize the limits to growth. And so there is a place for tangata whenua uh, in the management of our environment, in the management of our resources, because they have that ancient wisdom and connection to the land that should be harnessed along the operations of uh, our institutions, such as DOC. Now, kia ora. <laughs> I'm interested in what the New Zealand perspective is yeah. and how anyone has been thinking about these things in New um, Well, there's New Zealanders in the room who, who would be as competent as I am to answer it. But uh, the New Zealand situation is, is the same, but there's, a, there's a, a few complicating factors. So we do the same uh, polling as Andrew has been doing, and this is for the Asian New Zealand Foundation, and the responses have been uh, trending upwards, mm -hmm. except for the Māori respondents, and they're trending down. So there's a, a political, cultural dimension in which they see 
some of the exclusion from the education market or the, the, um, the labour market as being an issue, but they're also deeply concerned that the diversification of New Zealand's uh, demographic base is then going to change the balance. And I don't know whether you noticed, but that um, already the Asian communities of Auckland are larger than the combined Māori and Pasifika mm. communities of Auckland. And then sometime, it, again, because the, 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 dem the population change is occurring so fast, we would have said mid-20s, it looks like it's going to be early 20s, when the um, population, the Asian population of New Zealand will hit 800,000, which will make it the same size as the Māori population. Mm -hmm. So suddenly the, the political landscape changes quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But the other side is that the, many of the Māori um, iwi tribes are getting settlements. So I work with Ngāti Kahanunu in Hawke's Bay. Over the next two years, over the next three years, I beg your pardon, they will receive a settlement of $500 million. That's an injection into the local economy. They are going to look at, um, at new schemes of economic but also social and educational development. What is that going to look like? We're not sure, but they're becoming major players in their own right. And quite how that sits along the issues that we've been talking about, I'm not sure because it's new territory. So it, it's same, same, same in New Zealand, but I think there are some additional dimensions given the power of Māori communities or Māori organisations. And I'll just end with something which, is, um, which, which I've made before, which is not a popular point. Um, there's a lot of economic power that resides in Māori organisations. Māori households are a very different matter. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think that's a good point. Mm. Did you have any... Thank you for the invitation to, to speak. Um, I just feel that the tone is going to change slightly in terms of what I've got to say. Um, so what we're doing is we've been funded through EMB to look at what New Zealand looks like in 2036. So I just, um, I, I've spoken to some of you before, um, Peter here and Reeps conference, but I'll, and I'll be saying some of the same things, but I just wanted to give you a flavour of some of the things that are happening. Um, let me start. I'm going to disappear off to do yet another media interview because the Labour Party <coughs> decided to announce its immigration policy. And um, I'm pretty disappointed, I've got to say. And I think you, as the sector, should be disappointed and you should be saying that some of your clients and some of the things you do uh, are being undervalued by the Labour Party. Um, why they should be focusing on bachelor's degrees as the benchmark, I do not know. Um, so, as you can tell, I'm a slightly fired up. Duncan Garner and I had a very interesting conversation on television yesterday morning, and um, he tried to get me to say that the Labour Party were making it all up on the who. Well, we're joined now by Massey University sociologist, um, Professor Paul Spoonley in Auckland Business Chamber of Commerce, Chief Executive Michael Barnett. Great to see you, gentlemen. Appreciate morning, your time coming on the programme this morning. Uh, so the really big question is two things. One, and this involves our population. Yes. When do immigrants start coming back into New Zealand? Because we need immigrants for our diversity and our skill level especially, our skills and our jobs, don't we? Yes, we do. Okay, so we need to pick the right immigrants. Your turn. Okay. Yeah. But also, <laughs> but also uh, business needs them as well. Um, we had Absolutely do, and and to me, I think that's one of the biggest stalls on our economy yes. and biggest levels of uncertainty. Am I going to have people picking fruit at his orchard in, in the in the Hawke's Bay um, yes, or not? That to me is one issue. The <laughs> other thing is, um, when the government comes in, um, we need to retell so our I'm story. I'm picking up. You've either got a way of thinking where it's about keeping people out. Yep. Or the other way of thinking, which I think is the more preferred way of thinking, is how do we get people in? Mm. Precisely. But we, we Precisely. Can't not have people come in. I come back to the immigration. Yes. My skills, my you know, my Amazons that are doing movies, my pickers who are going to be picking my fruit. Amazons, and, are they, Michael? I don't care. <laughs> you know, but to me, there is so much. We actually need to have people coming in. It's not a choice. And, and remember that, quite apart from the workers that um, Michael's people want. International education, 4.4 billion, 30,000 jobs, mm. gone. Yep. So what are we going to do it's there? It's massive industry itself, so is tourism, all these things. Absolutely. All these things are lining up. Hey, lovely yep. to see you guys. Really appreciate it. Very quickly, the number of Auckland businesses have gone under. We wouldn't have a clue. Yeah.
Mm, right. So I, I think Auckland is the test case or the laboratory in which we get to play, and play is probably the wrong word because it's much more mm. serious than that, but we, in which we get to play around and, and decide how we do politics, and in this case, recognition of diversity. And we started today by talking about uh, council and the wards. Yeah. And, you know, we're far from getting that right. So we, we, we need to ask the question right around the community. Are there differences between people who are tangata whenua in terms of recognition as opposed to those who are immigrants and their descendants? And my answer is yes. Absolutely. I mean, I think the conversation should be a very different conversation. And so I react quite strongly and very negatively when people say, you know, there's, there's me, I'm Pakia, and there's others who are, who are different. No, there are not. They're not all the same. And we need to recognise and nuance those sorts of conversations. Yeah. I mm. feel like with that kind of uh, positioning of Pākehā versus everyone else, I always try to think of the ideal as being Māori and everyone else, because Māori are they're kind of the only unique kind of aspect of New Zealand that really needs to be upheld um, if we are to move forward. And I think there just needs to be more solidarity. Mm. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case. Of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I've traveled each and every highway And more, much more than this I did it my way Regrets, I've had a few then again